No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history, and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico makes it feels like home. This week we're exploring the north central region of our state. From Spanish plazas to native pueblos, rapid rivers to cliffs of red. It's a breathtaking place, so let's get going. My first stop this week, Ghost Ranch, just 15 minutes up the road from Abiquiu on Highway 84. Ghost Ranch is most commonly associated with the legendary artist Georgia O'Keeffe, who made this land her home, not to mention the subject matter of her renowned paintings. And while this location still draws artists from all over the globe, it has become an all-around education and retreat center, catering to travelers with any range of interests and hobbies. Drop in for the day or take up lodging on site to enjoy any number of activities. For me, I've slated a handful of things to try. First up, I'm meeting up with Stefan to take on the climbing wall, just one element of the ranch's challenge course. This is the Ghost Ranch High Challenge Course, uh, and it's a facility really designed for personal growth and development and team development. Developing themselves what it takes to bump up to the edge of their comfort zone and then step across yeah. and expand their comfort zone. Yeah. When you're relaxed, you're usually a lot more open to the possibilities that exist around you. So. Great. So I trust you already, Stefan. So let's Hoorah. show me what you All right. what we're gonna do today. I have a harness on. You're gonna be wearing a harness. Shimmy it on up. And then we're gonna double it back and make that red disappear. Through this tie-in loop. On belay? Belay is on. Climbing? Climb on. Alright. Here we go. Yeah, and he's off. And I'm off. Nice. Good. I like it. Little steps is good. Nice. Oh, and then a big one, too. It all works if it does. Nice. It all works if it does. Keep that breath flowing. Don't forget about your goal. Sweet, nice job. Woo! Right, it's all about keeping your eye, eye hand-eye coordination and keeping the movements flowing. Yeah, it's yeah. Connected. It's very much vertical yoga. Yeah. For sure. Touchdown. Oh! Almost looked graceful for a second. That was a Mission Impossible move with the rappel down, huh? <laughs> just like, just like. Ah. Nice job, man. Thank you. Really Belay good. off? Belay is off. All right. Thank you, Belay. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> now that I've found my focus, I think I'm ready to take a stab or take Draw. aim at archery. And you're in release. Yeah. That was like off the cuff, man. <laughs> that was, that was the, the best shot I've had in like, like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Will gives me a few pointers, and I'm ready to try for my first bullseye. With these, the top bit of your pads right here on your fingers. Okay. Draw and fire and fire. Ooh. What Whoa. up? All right. That was awesome. Ooh, your score so for let's say 19, 21, 23. That's pretty good. For the first time? Dude, what up? Yeah. That was All awesome. Right. <laughs> That's impressive, right? Archers take aim. Draw and fire. This is like summer camp for grown-ups. Oh, I'm having so much fun. Ooh. Boom! Ooh. Or you just have a natural talent you can keep on doing it. After a good dose of outdoor activity, I duck inside to meet with the curator of paleontology, Alex Downs. Next to O'Keeffe's paintings, Ghost Ranch is also famous for the dinosaur remains that have been found on the property. And Alex is the man to talk to when it comes to dinosaurs. 
So Alex, among all the different things you can do at Ghost Ranch, you can also see dinosaurs, right? Yeah, absolutely. We have the oldest North American dinosaurs that we have whole skeletons of. So can you tell me about some of the paleontology and archaeology kind of history here on the property? Well, the first Triassic fossils found in the Southwest were found right near Ghost Ranch back in the 1870s. Well, this is a baby Coelophysis uh, skull. This is where its eye was, and this is its snout, and you can see the teeth along here. All land vertebrates, when they're babies, they have big eyes and short snouts. How old is this fossil that we're looking at right now? It's a little over 200 million years old, somewhere around 205, 207, something like that. Uh, no, no big deal. Yeah. About three times as old as Tyrannosaurus. Wow. Thinking about everything that can be found in the cliff faces around here, I'm anxious to get back outside. Which leads me to my next activity, horseback riding. Jeff gets me saddled up, and we're ready to head for O'Keeffe's Lavender Hills. There's nothing more romantic and iconic than riding through the dramatic southwestern landscape by horse, and no better place to do it than here at Ghost Ranch. Feeling fully immersed in O'Keeffe country, I'm ready to learn more about this woman and her work. So I head for my Georgia O'Keeffe landscape tour with guide Karen Butts. This one is called Cliffs Beyond Abiquiu Dry Waterfall, and this was painted in 1943. And this would have been something that O'Keeffe could have walked out the door to get the exact perspective. So what do you think this landscape does for artists? Why do they, what, you know, what draws them here? I think people are drawn here because there's so many possibilities. And I think maybe for some people it's such a different environment than they're used to from their homes, from where they live and they work, that they become just open to new ideas and concepts and they allow themselves to be something they haven't maybe been before. Mm -hmm. And I think it's true for everybody, not just artists really. I think we're all artists, you know, everybody creates, right? Yeah. So I think that potential is just somehow like bubbling on the surface here. What better way to end the day at Ghost Ranch than looking through the eyes of Georgia O'Keeffe? Before you head to Ghost Ranch, here are some tips. The ranch is 14 miles north of Abiquiu, 65 miles north of Santa Fe. Drop in for the day or check out one of their week-long retreats or workshops. From music, yoga and wellness, to weeks designed for families, they have something for everybody. In addition to on-site lodging, the ranch also offers campsites for RVs and tents. And coming up next, a day in our capital. And now, from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. There are dozens of reasons travelers flock to Santa Fe every year. Our state's capital is an art and cultural mecca, and a great representation of what our state has to offer. At the heart of Santa Fe is the plaza. And for most people, this is the first stop on their visit to town. From the vendors outside the Palace of the Governors, to stables like Shiprock Gallery and O'Farrell Hats, there is no shortage of options when it comes to shopping on the plaza. And don't miss the opportunity to step inside the churches that anchor the town square. From St. Francis Cathedral to the Loreto Chapel, and the country's oldest church, the San Miguel Mission, each one beckons a visit inside. And be sure to wear your walking shoes because just up the road from the plaza is another popular Santa Fe destination, Historic Canyon Road, a half mile stretch of road that has over 100 galleries, boutiques, and restaurants. As the oldest capital city in North America, Santa Fe is loaded with history. But if you want a taste of the Santa Fe of today, head to the recently revived Rail Yard District. This area features a farmer's market, world-renowned galleries, performance spaces, and a seasonal artist market. Here you will see locals shopping for their weekly provisions and fellow travelers sampling the local food and culture. One could say that the rail yard is a crossroads where all the best features of a small, quaint town combine with the benefits of an urban metropolis, including transportation. Take the railroader into town and step off the train right into the action. Just like visitors did when this stop on the Atchison, Topeka and Santa Fe Railroad was first established in 1880. By train, by bike, or by foot, this is the place where locals and visitors alike can gather, shop, and take in the sights and flavors of Santa Fe. This truly is a place where you can feel less like a tourist and more like a local. Oh man, that's good. Hey. Here's some things to consider before you head to Santa Fe. Our capital city is an hour's drive north of Albuquerque, right smack in the north central part of our state. Check the rail runner schedule to add to the adventure. The farmer's market is open Saturdays year round and on Tuesdays, May through November. 
For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit NewMexico.org. Less than seven miles north of Santa Fe is the charming village of Tezuque, and in the heart of this village is the Shadoni Foundry. Situated on a former apple orchard, Shadoni is an active foundry, meaning they cast metals for sculptures here, many of them installed on-site in their eight acres of sculpture gardens. Visitors here can see sculptures by over 140 artists from around the country, and take a tour to learn the complex process that goes into creating this type of artwork. And now, the moment I've been waiting for, the pour. The pour is a highlight of this trip. Watching the fiery liquid metal being poured into a cast is definitely a unique experience, and a suspenseful one. Each member of the pour team wears a protective suit, but even with this protection, temperatures inside the suits can reach up to 140 degrees Fahrenheit. It is a highly choreographed event, and one that must go perfectly according to plan to be a success. After touring the facilities and witnessing the pour firsthand, I had a ton of questions, so I was glad to have the opportunity to meet with Scott Hicks, the president of the company. So Scott, that was just amazing seeing the pour. <laughs> I, I, you never realize how much goes into making a bronze sculpture, but you know, there's so yeah. many, the intricacy and the ceremony of pouring such hot liquid into a yeah. small casing is just, it's amazing. We're, we're taking a, a piece of the creation of art that artists themselves don't have to be involved in, melting right. the metal and pouring it into the molds. Mm -hmm. And we've perfected that to a point where we're really, really good at it and they can trust us with that. And when you're in there, it's almost meditative. You know, uh -huh. it's, you know every movement is calculated and, and, and efficient, you know. Those guys are very, very well trained and as you notice, they're very choreographed. They know what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and then they back out of the way. Yeah. They're very efficient, they're very perceptive, they watch out for each other. It's their show. Leave them alone, let them do the, you know, and they're really, really good at it. Yeah. Really good at it. That's one of the, the draws here for me, and people probably come here from all over the country, mm -hmm. if not the world, to see this kind of they art. They do, mm -hmm. they do, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, and it is an art. The, the pouring of the metal is like the culmination of all the arts before and, and after of the foundry process, but everybody has to work really well together in the wax room, in the dip room, in the metal shop afterwards, uh, in the uh, patina department afterwards. But this is, the, this is the fun one. This is the one where you get to watch the 2,000 degree metal being poured. Other than that, you guys have the, you know, the gallery, you have this beautiful open gallery in the field. Mm -hmm. How did this all come together? How did it start? Well, that guy over there, <laughs> I, I told you I was gonna blame you. <laughs> That's my father. Um, he started the company back when I was just a teenager, actually. We moved here from Amarillo, Texas. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, he was a sculptor and he taught art classes and things like that, but in Amarillo. And, you know, Santa Fe is much better known as an art community than, than Amarillo was. We had an opportunity to move here and join a bunch of other artists in a, an art community, mm. uh, an 86 acre area outside of Santa Fe, and it was just gorgeous. And so we, we picked up and moved, and, but it's been really, really wonderful ever since. We started pouring bronze, and then you realize people want to see this. It's mm -hmm. really fascinating. It's been 43 years now. 43 years. Yeah. So we didn't really choose to suit it kind of chills us. us. Why do you like this medium compared to another medium? What, what do you think that makes us so different? I, I mentioned earlier that I'm a firefighter, mm -hmm. and one of the things about fighting a house fire, the things that you find behind, left behind, bronzes. I mean, they're indestructible. All right. the paintings are gone, <laughs> all the wood carvings are gone, all the clay pieces are gone. Well, maybe the clay not so much, but bronze is enduring. It's, it's, mm -hmm. It uh, doesn't go away. It changes, it evolves, it's a, a living, growing material. Mm -hmm. it, the patina will change and all that. I love that. So and if you leave the bronze out in the, in the wild, the outdoors, it'll continue to grow and evolve. Wow. So it's really enduring, but it's also an organic process. Just a quick jaunt from Santa Fe, the Shadoni is a must-see on your way in or out of town. When planning your visit to Shadoni Foundry, here's some helpful hints. The Foundry is just under seven miles from Santa Fe Plaza. Take Highway 84 or Bishop's Lodge Road to get there. The sculpture gardens are open during daylight hours year round. The bronze pour is on Saturdays, but pour times may vary, so call ahead to confirm. And coming up, get ready to hit the road, the high road that is. And now from our cabinet secretary of tourism, Monique Jacobson, here is another New Mexico true treasure. New Mexico's true treasures spread across the entire state. But in a few key locations, they pack together like a string of pearls. And that's the case with must-see churches along the High Road to Taos. Maybe the most famous of these churches that date back centuries is the Santuario de Chimayo. 
Chimayo welcomes everyone. Visitors come for the wonder, pilgrims come for the worship, the faithful believe it is a place of healing. And whatever your religious background, you will appreciate the simple beauty and serenity at Chimayo. Up the road in Las Trampas is the more rugged but less visited San Jose de Gracias Church. This classic Spanish mission church is older than the Declaration of Independence and still appears much like it originally did, thanks to care and renovation over the years. And at the northern end of the high road is Ranchos de Taos and the photogenic San Francisco de Assis Church. Georgia O'Keeffe is among the artists who have made the backside of this church iconic, but the front and the interior have plenty of attraction as well. The high road drive is loaded with scenery, timeless northern New Mexico villages, and artist galleries, but the churches merit your attention as you try to absorb all this scenic byway offers. Every church has its own story, and be sure to go inside to fully experience your visit to these New Mexico true treasures. Kids are welcome, but remember, these are places of worship that require quieter traffic. For more about the high road, its churches, or any of the places in today's show, please visit newmexico.org. At the far end of Taos, nestled beneath Pueblo Peak, among sprawling green pastures, is the majestic Taos Pueblo. Taos Pueblo is one of the most notable sites in our state. The only living Native American community designated as both a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a National Historic Landmark, people from all over the world come to experience this unique and sacred place. This village of multi-storied adobe buildings has been inhabited for 1,000 years. It is amazing to think how these structures of mud and straw have stood the test of time and how their full-time residents choose to live, still to this day, without running water or electricity, so their ancient way of life may be preserved. I had the chance to meet with Shinoa, one of the Pueblo's tour guides, to find out more about her people's remarkable history. Experts like to say that we settled this area in 1200 AD, um, although our people don't believe that, obviously. We feel and we believe that our people have been here since time immemorial. Our first European contact was actually um, in the late 1500s when the Spanish came up through Mexico. Um, you know, they came as far north as Taos, current day Taos. And when they came, they did, you know, obviously bring the concept of Christianity, Catholicism, as well as labor. So um, that was forced upon our people um, at that time. And so when that happened, you know, a lot of our people were punished for practicing their cultural beliefs. So it wasn't just our people, but you know, Pueblo people, all in current day New Mexico. So they retaliated and um, it led to what is called the Pueblo Revolt of 1680. And that was a, an effort of all Pueblos in New Mexico to you know, stand up against the Spanish and um, reclaim our land and reclaim our way of life. The Pueblo people struggled to maintain their way of life did not end there. But they have stood strong and true to their beliefs, and that is why travelers like myself are able to witness the Pueblo as it stands today. Beyond its history, the Pueblo is an active living community whose people are welcoming and eager to share their culture with you. Not to mention, you can also buy goods directly from the artisans of the Pueblo. Walking the grounds of this village, I cannot help but feel immense gratitude and appreciation for what these people have lived through and the devotion they have to their culture. It is a lesson for us all. For your visit to Taos Pueblo, here's some things to keep in mind. Taos Pueblo sits just outside of Taos, a little more than an hour north of Santa Fe. The Pueblo is open daily, but since it's a living community, tribal rituals may impact the hours of operation. Check their calendar for ceremonial dances and feast days, but on these days, remember to leave your camera at home. To learn more about Pueblo etiquette, order your native New Mexico guide at newmexico.org. And stay tuned for Fast Times on the Rio Grande. Besides the ancient adobe structures of the Pueblo, Taos is also known for another architectural style, the Earthship. Rising up out of the ground, casting reflective light from recycled bottles and cans, taking on shapes like you've never seen before, these structures beg the question, what exactly is an Earthship? I head to the Earthship Visitor Center to find out. 
Earthships are uh, basically an autonomous home. It's 100% self-sufficient, off the grid. The building is made out of recycled materials, automobile tires, bottles, cans, cardboard. If it's blown around on the street, yeah. I'm out there picking it up. More than 30 years ago, Ron's mentor and Earthship pioneer, Michael Reynolds, built the first Earthship. And now they may be found in all corners of the world. But Taos is where it all began, and people arrive every day to tour these homes and to see the progressive concepts at work, and to learn how to build an Earthship of their own. So whether you want to build your new homestead or just tour this unique colony of the high desert, make the trip. And if you're lucky, stay the night. Earthships are available for rent so you can experience their creature comforts for yourself. One of the defining features of the Taos area is the Rio Grande River and Gorge. And the best way to experience this mighty river is by boat. So I'm opting to take a trip down the Whitewater Rapids with rafting guide and local legend, Cisco Guevara. I meet Cisco and crew at their adventure center in town. From here, it's a short drive to our launch point, just outside of Pilar. I have a feeling I'm in for a good time. Any man who can rock a hat like that must have adventures up his sleeve. And I'm ready for it. There are two rules on this trip. Number one is don't fall out of the boat. Number two, which is equally as important as the first rule is, do not fall out of the boat. After a brief but necessary safety synopsis, we're ready to hit the water. We're rafting a part of the river known as the race course. A great course for both the guys and newbies like me the water provides fun navigational challenges. And while it has some nice smooth stretches, it's filled with category three rapids that can really get your heart racing. Once we'd hit the rapids, I was glad to be with a guy like Cisco, someone who's been doing this for 46 years. And it takes a specific type of person to be able to, to get down these waters and have fun while doing it, even though it's, you know, it is, when it can get pretty hectic and, and gnarly at times, right? That's true, it's a, it's a huge responsibility. You literally have people's lives in your hands, mm -hmm. especially in the bigger sections like the Taos Box. Um, so you have to have a, you know, a love of the outdoors, a love of the river, and not be afraid of taking the responsibility mm -hmm. of helping people get outside their envelope and really enjoy life to the fullest. That drilling rush, it does, when you see that rock and you see how everything is kind of converging on itself, it's a bit of a, a rush, I would say. Well, that's true, yeah. We get uh, more than one adrenaline junkie working <laughs> for us and being our clients as well. <laughs> but I've noticed over the years that more and more people are now seeking and are very satisfied with just floating on the calm, mellow, beautiful, scenic, you know, it's not, it's a different kind of energy and different kind of thrill. When you're in the canyon and the sun is going down and you're on really flat water so you don't have to worry about life and limb mm -hmm. and you can just enjoy the beauty of that changing light that New Mexico is so famous for, that thrill is just as big as the adrenaline thrills of running the big white water. Your favorite thing about you know growing up on this river or you know even guiding these tours well you know there's being outside being on the river like we we're talking earlier the moving water releases an energy that helps balance a person mm -hmm. you know mind body and soul for me it's when they experience the beauty and the wonders and the power of nature that we put them in contact with the change and the renewal that happens in themselves, it's easy to see in some individuals. Mm -hmm. And it's really gratifying to send them on their way back to their, whatever they do, mundane or not, and they're gonna be better human beings. So we're actually making the world a better place to live by doing this as a business. You don't think about that aspect of how one experience can change someone, you know? Maybe that adrenaline rush or really seeing the, 
the power that nature can have when you're working with it. Because really when you're on this river, it's you're, you have to work with the river and understand it and be with it in order to get through it, right? That's right. Yeah. You have to work with it, not against it. Uh -huh. Life lessons on the river, that's what it's all about. For your whitewater adventure, here's some tips. Taos is just over an hour north of Santa Fe. Half a day and full day trips are available, from white knuckle rafting to serene float trips, whatever floats your boat, literally. Trips may have different meeting points. Clarify your departure spot with your guide and get directions. GPS is not reliable in this wonderful place that is truly off the map. I'll tell you, after seeing all these beautiful things in north central New Mexico, this is like icing on the cake. The Gorge is one of my personal favorite places in all of New Mexico. And I'm just so grateful to be here and have this job and sharing it with you. So thank you so much for watching New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. We'll see you next time.